So welcome. So in this short session, we are going to discuss about uh, the factorial function, the gamma function, and the beta function. So these functions are very key in solving problems in engineering and in statistics. So I start by discussing about the factorial function. So factorial function or factorial x is written uh, by this notation and is defined as x times x minus one, x minus two times x minus three, up to times four times three times two, and then times one. And in this definition, we take x to be a natural number. So it just simply means that if you have any natural number to define its factorial, you take that natural number, you multiply by that natural number minus one, then next you subtract one up to the point you reach one. Now uh, by convention, we take zero factorial to have a value one. And so once you define x factorial in this form as given in this uh, equation, if you start at a point x minus one, then times x minus two times x minus three up to times one, then that will be defining x minus one factorial. So therefore x factorial can as well be written as x times x minus one factorial. Similarly, if you start defining a product from x minus two, x minus three times x minus four up to times one, then from x minus two up to product one, you are defining x minus two factorial. So therefore x factorial can as well be written as x times x minus one times x minus two factorial. Similarly, x factorial is the same as x times x minus one times x minus two times x minus three factorial. The reason as to why it is always, uh, it's, all, it's good to know these relationships is because you may be asked to simplify some factorial expressions and expressing higher factorials in terms of lower factorials can easily can help you to know how to simplify such expressions. For example, if you are asked to express, to simplify uh, the expression, if the equation is simplify, say 100 factorial, over 98 factorial, then you do not have to multiply 100 by 99 up to 1, then divided by 98 times 97 up to 90, uh, uh, 1. You simply write this one as 100 times 99 times 98 factorial, and then divided by 98 factorial, so that 98 factorial cancels out, and then the answer becomes 99 times 100, which will be given by this. Or if you're asked to simplify n factorial over n minus two factorial, you simply write this one as n times n minus one times n minus two factorial, and then divided by n minus two factorial. So this and this cancels out and you have n into n minus one, which is n squared minus n. So that's why knowing how to write higher factorials in terms of lower factorials can be very useful to help you simplify some problems. Now, with that, uh, we can give a few examples. If you're asked to define two factorials, simply means two times one, which is two. 3 factorial means 3 by 2 by 1, which is 6. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. Six, 5 factorial is 5 times 1 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which gives 120. And you can uh, define other 
factorials or other natural numbers in a similar way. Then uh, next, there's what we call a double factorial. Now, double factorial simply means that you use uh, the sign for factorial twice. So we define double factorial of x as there are two formulas, x times x minus 1 times 5 times 2 times, uh, times 5 times 3 times 1, when x is a, an odd natural number. And when, n, when x is an even natural number, then we use the formula x times x minus 2 times 6 up to times 6 times 4 times 2. So for example, 4 factorial, 4 double factorial is the same as 4 times 2. So because 4 is an even number, and 5 double factorial is the same as 5 times 3 times 1, because 5 is an odd number, we we'll use the first formula to get 15. And you see, from this result on definition of the double factorial, we see that x factorial is the same as x double factorial times x minus one double factorial. So for example, if we want to define, so for instance, we are saying x factorial is the same as x double factorial x minus one double factorial. Now, when I say, say it's like, for example, five factorial, it's the same as five. And then five minus one double factorial. You see five double factorial because five is an odd number will be five times three times one. And this is four because four is an even number. We use the second formula, so it'll be four times two. And you see when we arrange this one, it's the same as five times four times three times two times one, which is the same as definition of five factorial. So therefore, x factorial is the same as x double factorial times x minus one double factorial. So after defining the double factorial, uh, let's define what we call the falling factorial or the descending factorial or lower factorial. So it's denoted by x sub n, which is defined as x times x minus one times x minus two up to times x minus n plus one. So the falling factorial counts the words of longitude n in order without repetition. And as an example, when n is zero, so x falling factorial of zero is one. When n is one, we'll have x. When n is two, we'll have x times x minus one, <coughs> which signifies to x squared minus one. And when x is n is three, we'll have x into x minus one, x minus two, which simplifies to x power three minus three x squared plus two x. And when n is four, we'll have x into x minus one, into x minus two, into x minus three, which gives us x power four minus six x power three plus 11 x squared minus six x. So when you pick x for instance to be five, and we pick n to be three, then you are going to use uh, this formula. The answer will be five times four times three, or simply using this equation here. So when you put where this x, you put five. So we'll have five cubed. Using uh, what we have in number four, we'll have five cubed, and then minus. three times five squared, and then plus two into five. And you get the answer as 60. So that's how we define falling factorial. 
And also we have what we call the rising factorial, a four comma factorial, which is defined as x into x plus one, x plus two, up to x plus n minus one. And as an example, so when n is zero, we'll have one. When n is one, we we'll have x. When n is two, we'll have x into x plus one, which simplifies to x squared plus x. When n is three, we'll have x into x plus one, x plus two, we get x cubed plus three x squared plus two x. And when n is four, we'll get x power four plus six x cubed plus 11 x squared plus six x. So when you take x to be two, and then n to be three, we using formula four, we get the answer to be 24. And then we now define what you call gamma function. So gamma function of x is defined by this improper integral, integral from zero to infinity, t raised power x minus one, t raised power minus t dt. So where x is not negative natural numbers, uh, neg uh, negative integers and zero. So with the definitions of the falling factorial and the rising factorial, we can as well express uh, the, the gamma function in terms of uh, the falling and rising factorial using this uh, two formulas. And then common gamma function rules and facts. Uh, these rules or facts can help you to simplify some problems uh, that involves a gamma function. So we have a gamma of x plus one is the same as x gamma of x. And so from this same, same formula, you can make gamma of x the subject and that will give you gamma of x plus one divided by x. And also gamma of n plus one can it be expressed in terms of a factorial function, which is the same as n factorial or gamma of n is the same as n minus one factorial. These formulas can easily be proven and the results are very useful uh, in simplification of gamma functions. Then gamma of a half is given by root phi, gamma of one is one and also gamma of two is one, but gamma of zero is plus or minus infinity gamma of negative one is plus or minus infinity, gamma of minus two is plus or minus infinity, etc. And if you define gamma of z and you multiply by gamma of one minus z, then it can be shown that the result signifies to pi over sine of pi z, where z is a complex number. Then beta functions, by definition, beta functions are with two parameters m and n is defined as the integral from zero to one x raised power m minus one into x into one minus x raised power n minus one dx <coughs> so we also have other alternative definitions of beta function uh, which can be given in terms of the trigonometric function as the integral from zero to pi over two two sine raised power two m minus one theta cos raised power two n minus one theta the theta. And also we have a beta function defined in terms of uh, the integral from zero to infinity, x raised power m minus one over one plus x raised power m plus n. Now it is always advisable to know all these three different definitions of gamma function uh, of the beta function, because you may be given a problem that requires a simplification using the first definition where the limits are from zero to one. Sometimes you'll be given a problem which has limits, uh, which uh, dictates that you need to express your limits from zero to pi over two, which calls for the definition given in one. And sometimes you may be given 
a problem to solve which requires your limits to be from zero to infinity. So you have to know that this is structure of the definition of the beta function with parameters m and n. So <clears throat> ensure that once you know the definition of this beta function with parameter m and n, you also remember these other alternative definitions that can always be very useful depending on the situation or the kind of problem you're solving. Now, also we have some facts about beta function that beta function of parameters m and n is the same as beta function of parameters n and m, but beta of m n is the same as beta n m. And it can also be shown that beta function of parameters m and n can be expressed as factorial as gamma functions, which is gamma of m times gamma of n divided by gamma of m plus n. And also because we know we can express gamma function in terms of factorial function, then beta function can also be expressed as factorial function as given in this formula three. So those were the few uh, or a summary on factorial and gamma and beta functions that will be very useful in helping us to solve problems in mathematics, engineering, and statistics. And uh, when you start solving problems, I will prove some of the uh, facts of the rules that we have stated uh, in this uh, session. So thank you.